Take a look. This is a collection room for the Chicago Academy of Sciences, which is one of the largest collections of natural history specimens in the entire city, after the Field Museum, but whatever, it's still absolutely massive. In all of these cabinets, there are hundreds and thousands of natural history specimens, more than you could ever believe, entomology cabinet 14. Let's see, all of these trays are full of insects. This is the entomology collection. If we scoot this open, open a random one, who knows what we'll see? Ooh, some interesting moths. How cool is that? Have you ever seen a moth that looks like that? I haven't, but we're not here for moths. Today, I wanna to show you something that I think is extremely exciting. Today, we're checking out the eagle collection and like large hawks and things like that. It's a particularly interesting shelf, but first we want to check out a couple other things on the way. This is my favorite specimen here. This is our, the mastodon jaw that's just kind of hanging out. There's a prehistoric paleontology section over here. Here is most of the entomology stuff. Over here, if we run over here, <clears throat> you're gonna see oology. That's the study of eggs. There's just like a heck ton of eggs in here. If we pop this open, eggs. Maybe we'll save that for another day. Over here, this is the area beyond this, I don't know, this log that, that a beaver chewed. This is the section where typically I film a lot of the videos that you've seen so far on this blue backdrop. Some here, I've also been to a couple other museums across the United States. Here is the, mam the mammalogy section, but this is what interests us. If we go all the way over here, look, here's the tag. Ornithology Cabinet 7, Accipitridae, that's hawks and eagles, very large birds that are, I don't know, meat eaters, they have hooked beaks, it's gonna be interesting, let's check it out. So first, we undo all of these things, we pull, yeah, yank it up, yeah, we throw this to the side, and we see what's in. Oops, excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> okay, here's what we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six shelves of Acipitridae, enormously large birds. Hello, me and this, this greater prairie chicken would like to offer you a warning. You are about to watch a video that has some preserved animal specimens. By preserved, we mean they are all preserved and collected and used as scientific specimens to help in the preservation of these very species. A lot of these are very old and weren't collected for a very long time. Just a warning, you were warned by the chicken. This is coming. If you wish to keep watching, keep watching. If you have an issue with that, it's understandable, but I would just recommend watching a different, uh, di di a different video, bye. Okay, let's have a look. I think we're gonna pull out this one first. We pull it out. See what we can see. This is what the trays look like. Here's how everything's organized. You can see there are a bunch of different bird specimens. They're all kind of preserved in a way that without their skeletons inside, they take out all of the meat and everything like that. Here's typically how it works. They get a bird specimen. I think they slice it down the middle, I'm pretty sure. And then they kind of peel the skin off, out of, off the rest of the body. It's described as peeling like a sock off your foot. It's what it's like taking this skin off of the rest of the bird body. I've done it before and it's exactly like that. So they do that, then they sew it up all together. And if you look over here, you can see that this is a very old specimen. It still has some of the material inside that they stuffed it with, this kind of hay material. But it might look like this specimen is in kind of rough shape, but you gotta really give them a break because these are super old. On the foot of all of these specimens, they have all of the information that scientists use to different, do different forms of research on them. This stuff is incredibly valuable, including the date that it was collected, which is February 10th, 1904. This bird is so old. That's absolutely outrageous. So here are a lot of the hawks. I think these are red-tailed hawks and some others. On this side over here, if you can see, there are some tags that usually describe what's on each of these trays. We have red-tailed hawks, rough-legged hawks, and Harris's hawks. Um, I think there's one more tray that I'd like to show you before we get to the bottom, which is the big stuff. Look at that guy, holy crap. That's a California condor, which is, I think this one's right here. Yeah. So here we have a couple more examples of the things that you might see in these bird collections. If you notice, all of the birds are kind of preserved in this, this like torpedo fashion. Honestly, it's only because they fit better on a shelf. Some museums have the wings spread. Some museums take off the wings, spread them and just like stack them up on parchment and put them in a cabinet all their own. And um, occasionally you might get some skeletons. 
which is what we have right here. I think if we pull this out, let me try it a little bit more. Yank. Okay, yeah. These are some bones from one of the birds that was in here. Typically, I don't know why. Typically, when it comes to collecting birds, they don't collect a lot of their bones. It seems like most commonly, they have those eggs over there. They'll have the skins. Maybe the skulls, that's pretty much it. Occasionally you might get a baby chick too, which is this one. This is kind of wild. I'm gonna pick this up carefully. We'll take a closer look. This is a baby hawk right here. Oh my gosh, look at this. It still has the down, which is absolutely incredible. Let me see if we can get a better thing. Ooh, look at that. So that means that this guy is under three weeks old because around three weeks they start developing feathers. So a very young one right there. Okay, but... Okay, <clears throat> this stuff has been kind of big. Let's go to the bottom shelf. That's where the really big stuff is. We're gonna push this in. Okay, big stuff. Oh boy. Okay, ready? <laughs> Here are the big birds. Here, we have a California condor. It is hard to explain. I don't know if this is appropriately describing how big this guy actually is. Absolutely enormous. California condors look like this. They kind of are disgusting, most notably because of that super bald head. Take a close look at it. It doesn't really preserve well over time, the skin specifically. It loses most of its color and it gets really wrinkly and stiff. But I mean, this is probably, I don't know, do you have a tag? Yeah, let's look at this tag. Zoom in on it. 1927. So this thing also, around 90 plus years old. So, I mean, it makes sense that it looks like this. A couple interesting things about California condors. If you notice, their beaks aren't really as hooked as the other hawks that we have in this cabinet right here. It's because hawks like these, they'll eat live prey, but California condors are scavengers. They eat a lot of dead stuff on the highway, so they don't need those piercing beaks to kill live prey. Also, the fact that they have, I mean, th they're scavengers and that's, <laughs> wait, let me try that again. <clears throat> you might be wondering why California condors have this, have this bald head and it's because they're scavengers. Literally on the highway, these guys will go down and eat any dead thing that they can find and they will shove their heads into the dead carcass and just like eat the insides. They've evolved bald heads so that when they pull their heads out, that the, the bacteria, the decaying flesh, doesn't get caught in their feathers and, and I don't know, create and cultivate diseases that, that could harm them or their young. So bald head washes off pretty easily. So that's why they evolved bald heads because they like eating dead stuff and putting their heads in them. That being said, I have no idea why they have this weird floofy fluff scarf thing that makes them look like, um, I don't know, your classic annoying ant or something like that. But this is, uh, man, these are the ones that we're looking for right here. This is the eagle specimen. I'm gonna do my best to bring it out. Okay, you gotta do care, pull this out very carefully. I'm gonna take this eagle specimen and put it on this little table right here so we can see it a little bit more easily. This is insane, bald eagles, very easily identified by this white or bald head and this gold, this kind of goldish, yellow beak right there. See that beak? Much longer than that condor because these things kill live prey. Another trait that suggests that is if we look at these talons, let me see if we can kind of open them up. Does it look good if we're there? Let's go like that. No, we like this. So <clears throat> their talons kind of look like, oh. eagle's talons kind of look like this. They have three in the front and then one in the back. Just pretend that my pinky's not really there. And that one in the back, you'll see that the talon on it is super extra long. Let's look at them right here. These are the front ones, and this is the back ones. The reason behind that is because when they hold their prey after they catch it, like fish or whatever they're eating, they'll grasp it with their front claws against the palm of their hand, and they'll use that thumb almost like a knife or like a spear, and they'll spear it in an attempt to, quite frankly, kill it so they can eat it. There. That's that eagle right there. That looks so freaking cool. So that's the large bird cabinet right here. Let me know if you guys like this video. I have a bunch more cabinets that I'm really interested in checking out, including, not limited to, this owl cabinet right there. It'd be interesting to look at some snowy owls, and this one is gonna be nuts, the non-North American birds. But 
That being said, we got entomology over there, mammalogy over there. If you want to open one of these egg cabinets, just let me know. And the teaching collection is just a whole closet full of really outrageous stuff like that, which is, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a zebra, but who knows? If you like this video, let me know. Thanks. Bye guys.